Welcome to the Plan B CRNA podcast. I'm your host, Bobby Jones, and I'm so excited that you're here. The Plan B CRNA podcast is the only show made specifically for nurse anesthetists who are exploring options outside of their traditional career paths. This is the place to expand your mind and your goals as we uncover new ways to produce side income together. Journey with me as I go down various rabbit holes to explore the best Plan B options for you. This episode is brought to you by On Call Capital. On Call Capital is dedicated to educating CRNAs and other healthcare providers about investing outside of the traditional stock market. On Call Capital also provides opportunities for you, yes, you, to create passive income and generational wealth while also lowering your taxable income through investments in the apartment and alternative investment spaces. If you haven't hit subscribe yet, make sure you do that right now so that you don't miss an episode. Thanks so much for joining me today. And now on with the show. Welcome to the rabbit hole on the Plan B CRNA podcast. I'm your host, Bobby Jones. And throughout my journey in finding a Plan B, I've gone down numerous rabbit holes to figure out which ones work for me. Since I've done some of this research already, I only think it's right to bring that information to fellow healthcare professionals to help aid in your search. As always, it's important for you, the listener, to do your own research and form your own opinions. Everyone's situation is unique, and a Plan B that works for one CRNA doesn't always work for another. Self-awareness is the key in any decision you make, since you must have an accurate grasp of your own strengths, weaknesses, and goals. Now, our topic today is one that I've looked into in the past, not to try to do myself, but because I could really use one for my own business. Our rabbit hole of the day is, dun, 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 social media management. Now, social media management wasn't really a thing until Twitter was created in 2006. But over that next decade and a half that followed, social media exploded, resulting in around 90% of marketing executives utilizing it as part of their marketing strategies. This is a great way for businesses to directly interact with customers who follow their brands. And for many small businesses, Social media is a cheap way to reach a ton of people. Now, this is a career field currently dominated by women, with 77% of social media managers in 2020 being female. And social media is still growing. Social media managers can expect about a 10% rate of job growth through 2030, uh, according to estimates, with an average wage of about $25 to $35 per hour. A social media manager may spend about 10 to 20 hours per month on a single client, resulting in roughly $250 to $700 per account. Get a few clients and you can get up to a few thousand a month, which isn't too bad, eh? But what does a social media manager actually do? In short, they're typically responsible for setting content strategy and driving engagement on a company's social platforms. To be successful, they often need to possess a knack for storytelling, a keen eye for design, and an ability to analyze what does and doesn't work with an audience. When I started to do a little bit of research into this specialty, I was honestly amazed by the sheer amount of options out there. There are those who focus more on the analytics and those who focus more on the strategy. There are community managers and moderators. There are copywriters and customer service folks. And of course, some of these roles require little training and some require quite a bit. It can be pretty overwhelming. And I don't want to get too far in the weeds, though. I'm going to just assume that you're not looking to create the next Mad Men firm. So for our purposes, we're going to focus on the freelance social media specialist whose tasks include the following. Developing strategies to increase followers. You can boost a company's profile on all social media platforms by increasing the number of followers they have and the amount of engagement via likes, comments, and shares that they receive. You may need to develop written or visual posts to achieve this. Creating and overseeing social campaigns. To drive engagement, you are responsible for coming up with and sometimes executing social campaigns that align with the company's larger marketing strategies. This can involve generating ideas for timely content or repurposing user-generated content. Producing and monitoring content. You may be responsible for posting and monitoring on all social media platforms. You'll need to schedule posts and observe responses, and you may need to respond to comments and messages from followers. Reviewing analytics. You must be able to analyze data to draw conclusions about how a company's posts and content are performing. This includes monitoring what social media users say about a brand or its competitors. And communicating with company stakeholders. 
Companies want to know that the work you're doing is having an impact. So you'll be expected to report your accomplishments or any problems that arise. You'll focus on metrics such as follower growth, engagement, creative content, campaigns, and the like. Now there is quite a market for social media managers as more and more small businesses look to utilize these types of services. Of course, there's plenty of competition too. Just type social media manager into Fiverr and you'll come up with thousands of them across the world. Some have their own business entities and some don't. If you're keeping it small, you probably don't have to worry much about that. And the sheer amount of competition, you know, that doesn't mean that you should worry. You can also use word of mouth or approach small businesses in your area directly to offer your services. It doesn't take too long to build a decent client list this way. And many people like having the personal touch of having someone nearby. If you're considering this type of side gig, you should probably enjoy and have some skill at various social media sites. You'll want to hone in on the platforms that you want to focus on. There's Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Pinterest, Instagram, YouTube, Snapchat, and TikTok, to name a few. You don't need to be a master in all of them, just the ones that you want to offer to clients. On top of that, though, it would probably help you to take a social media marketing class or two. There are quite a few certification courses out there, such as HubSpot, Google Digital Garage, Meta, and Acadium, most of which are actually free. There are also college certificate offerings, such as from the Wharton School at the University of Pennsylvania for around $600, and UC Davis, where you can actually enroll for free. I have a link in the show notes for 10 of the best, so make sure you check that out. Now, choosing a program that fits what you want to offer is important. Some programs focus on social media marketing and strategy. Some focus on Google search engine optimization, and others focus on social media advertising or influencer marketing. And of course, some offer a bit of all of that, along with teaching you how to actually become a freelancer. But one of the most valuable things you can do is listen to your customers. Working together with a business to develop their voice and build brand loyalty takes time and listening. Now, while you can do much of this work in your free time, creating a set schedule for your clients is an absolute must. You'll also want to choose a scheduling software program that works with your preferred social media platforms. Some common ones are Sprout Social, Hootsuite, Buffer, and Social Pilot. The idea is that you can create and schedule posts to come out on certain days, at certain times, and in consistent intervals. Each program has their own distinct advantages, such as cost, analytics, integration with multiple platforms, and large versus small team collaboration. Many of these sites have a free option as well, but the free basic plans come with minimal tools and are typically only good for one user. You'll likely want more features and the ability to integrate with more platforms or manage more accounts. As a result, you can expect to pay as little as $5 per month at Buffer to as much as $400 or more with Hootsuite, Loomly, or Sendable. Of course, you can pass this cost on to your clients, so it's important to work within their budget if that's your plan. Now, once you've gotten some education and decided on the software program you'd like to use, it's time to get going. Anyone who has started their own business knows that there's a bit of a chicken and egg problem when you start. Luckily, there are a few ways to begin. Number one, look for an entry-level position. No, that's not exactly freelance work, but taking an entry-level position can teach you the basics of social media marketing, establish contacts, and create a track record for you before trying to move on to freelance work. Look for titles such as social media coordinator, specialist, associate, or analyst, marketing assistant, or digital content producer. Number two, offer to volunteer your services for free. Experience with social media doesn't have to be relegated to the professional realm. If you volunteer for an organization or, you know, you go to church on Sundays and see that their accounts aren't taken care of, you can offer to run their social media accounts. You automatically have one client that you can refer future prospects to that way. And number three, you can create your own following. If you've built a sizable following on your own personal social media platforms, then that's worth using as your portfolio starter. Being able to market yourself successfully can indicate an astuteness that may translate into running a brand. Now from there, you can scale up as much as you desire. Maybe you get into it to discover that you only want a few clients. Maybe you enjoy the process of getting clients. And if you become large enough, you'll of course need to establish your business entity so that you can hire additional staff. 
Those staff members can take care of the day-to-day content management while you focus on developing and maintaining those business relationships. It really is up to you how far you choose to go with it. So on to one of my favorite parts, the pros and cons. We'll start with a pro. You get paid to spend time on your favorite social media platforms. The average person spends over an hour a day on social media. That would obviously increase if you're working in this side gig, but you may enjoy keeping an eye on popular influencers and brands to see what content is trending and how fans are engaging with it. Our first con, you can have too much of a good thing. Studies have linked excess social media use to lower self-esteem, social isolation, lack of sleep and concentration, unhappiness, anxiety, and depression. To combat this, you need to have a decent amount of breaks from social media by spending less time on your phone when not on the clock, turning off notifications, and creating phone-free time blocks and areas of your home, such as the dining room or bedroom. Next up is a pro. Your work could go viral or simply have a positive impact. It can be thrilling to see your posts or content start to take off, whether that's going viral, receiving praise from a celebrity, or having your work featured on a best brands and social media list. That leads us to our next con, though. Mistakes can go viral, too. Yeah, it does go both ways. And one careless or insensitive post could get you called out. It's certainly possible to publish typos when you're in a hurry. So the best thing that you can do is own up to it. Recover quickly by editing or deleting a post. Learn from the mistake and improve for the future. Next is a pro. You get feedback in real time. When you work in social media, you experience instant gratification from seeing engagement with your content and insights through analytics tools. You can track nearly everything. And the praise you get reinforces your work and helps boost your performance. Con, you have to constantly evolve to keep up. Social media is constantly changing. Not uncommon to nurses who are also in a constantly changing medical environment. But social media interfaces themselves, features, and algorithms are regularly tweaked. This technology determines if and how your brand's content shows up in your followers' feeds. These updates should be expected at least yearly from the major platforms, requiring revisions to your own content strategy. Just because Instagram stories are the thing right now doesn't mean they always will be. Pro, you are in the know with your clients. You will often find out about any changes in company leadership, new products and services, and legal or PR issues before other members of the team because you're probably responsible for public announcements through social media. Con, the big news or emergencies, they don't often fit your schedule. Your role may include customer service and crisis management. And if an unplanned issue arises, you'll likely have a lot of unexpected work to do with a quick turnaround. That can be pretty stressful. Pro, the work itself can be very creative. You have the opportunity to give voice to a business, which often means adding your own spin to what the company represents. You can humanize your brands. Think about all the Twitter wars that have popped up between social media accounts. I mean, Wendy's is regularly slaying, folks. Old Spice and Taco Bell got into a Twitter battle, and Popeye's and Chick-fil-A created a fried chicken war. Adding your own creativity can actually be really fun. And next is our con. There is variation across industries. Some companies will give you a ton of authority and control to publish timely content and and responses, and others may require multiple rounds of approvals before publishing new content. It can be a significant challenge to produce relevant in-the-moment content if you work with the latter. Pro, this is a scalable business. As mentioned earlier, you can keep it as small as you like if you're just looking to take up some spare time, or you can go bigger. If you start to scale, you can always hire staff to handle the things you don't enjoy. Con, this is an active side gig. You are trading time for money, and it takes work to put out consistent, high-quality content. And lastly, our final pro. Social media management is incredibly flexible. You can perform the tasks at nearly any time, particularly when the majority majority of your content comes out through scheduling software. Not only you can know whether the potential advantages outweigh the potential disadvantages. If you like being creative and working at a fast pace, doing something that's valued and in demand, then maybe this is for you. If you'd like to learn more, Jason McDonald is an author who has specialized in this particular niche. A few of his books are The Social Media Marketing Workbook, How to Use Social Media for Business, SEO Workbook, 
Search Engine Optimization Success in Seven Steps, and Google Ads Workbook 2022, Advertising on Google Ads, YouTube, and the Display Network. And all of those books, uh, along with several others that he's written, have been updated for 2022. And of course, I have a ton of links to help you get started on your journey, so check out those show notes. That's going to do it for today's show. As always, I'd like to thank you for listening to the Plan B CRNA podcast. If you found value today, make sure you hit subscribe and give us a five-star review. This show only grows because of you, so make sure that you share it with a friend, family member, or colleague to help them on their own passive income journey. I also want to hear from you. If you have a question, comment, or rabbit hole topic that you'd like me to cover in an upcoming podcast, make sure you rate and review us on your podcast player. I check those all the time, and I cover those questions in future episodes. If you'd like to know more about me and gain access to passive investment opportunities, Make sure to find me on Facebook, LinkedIn, or visit my website at www.oncallinvestments.com. This is Bobby Jones signing off. Until next time, be safe and take care of each other out there. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of the Plan B CRNA podcast. If you haven't already subscribed and reviewed the show, I'd be honored if you took the extra time. It really helps to expand our reach and get the word out about the show. If you're a CRNA who is interested in sharing your story on our podcast, I'd love to have you. Please email me at bobby at oncallinvestments.com for more information. This episode was brought to you by On Call Capital. They are dedicated to helping providers like you develop passive income and generational wealth through investments in the apartment and alternative investment spaces. Feel free to check out their website at www.oncallinvestments.com and subscribe to their free educational email series. You can find On Call Capital on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. You can also check out our YouTube page, where you'll find all of the show episodes along with other educational videos. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you on the next episode.